Chapter 7 of Flowers from the Garden of St. Francis for Every Day of the Year. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 7 Month of July. First day, St. Francis said, Happy he who places all his joy and happiness in the holy words and works of God, and who thus leads others to his holy love in joy happiness and bliss second day st bridget said there is no man however coldly disposed towards god who invoking the name of mary with a firm resolution not to sin again will not be for ever delivered from the tyranny of the devil unless he again entertain the thought of sinning mortally third day St. Francis said, Happy he who keeps in chains the enemy God has delivered up to him, namely, his body, and who is wise enough to be on his guard against it. For as long as he acts in this manner, no enemy is strong enough to harm him. Fourth day, St. Francis said, All respect and honor is due to priests. They are our superiors, and above us in dignity they are the spiritual brethren of all christians the spirit and life of the world fifth day st francis said let those who know of some fault in a brother not humble him or even speak of it but let him rather have compassion on him and hide his sin for he that is well needs not a physician but rather he that is sick sixth day blessed egidius said men ask of god gifts without end or limit and yet they serve him in a very limited way he who would be recompensed endlessly and without limit must love without limit and without end seventh day blessed egidius said the more virtue a man possesses the more he will be tempted and the greater hatred must he have for vice. The more vices you conquer, the more virtues you acquire. Eighth day, Blessed Egidius said, There is more virtue in bearing an injury without complaining than in great almsgiving or an austere fast. Ninth day, St. Bonaventure said, If you are a Christian, show yourself to be such not only by your words but in deed and in truth tenth day st joseph of cupertino said the most certain way of obtaining any grace from god is holy indifference and a complete resignation to his most holy will eleventh day st francis said we never renounce the world as long as we keep in our hearts the dangerous treasure of self-will. Twelfth day, Blessed Egidius said, The more vice a man feels within himself, so much the more should he speak of virtue. By often conversing on virtue, one turns to it more easily, and its practice is greatly facilitated thirteenth day st leonard of port marie said bodily ailments are ordained by divine providence to strengthen the health of the soul god sends them to us that we may detach ourselves from the world remember we are mortal and so withdraw from the dissipation of the world to thoughts more useful and holy fourteenth day st francis said obedience is always better than an obtained permission for in the latter there is something of self-will whereas in the former there is but the simple accomplishment of the superior's orders fifteenth day st francis said supreme wisdom consists in giving one's self up to the practice of good works watching over oneself and meditating on the judgment of god sixteenth day st francis said better for a spiritual man to suffer cold in his flesh 
than feel in his soul the least heat of impure passion seventeenth day blessed egedius of assisi said if you desire salvation seek not for consolation from any creature on earth falls arising from these consolations are more serious and more frequent than those which happen through afflictions eighteenth day blessed bernard of corleone said god will be loved as god that is to say with fear without reserve in preference to all creatures and without exception he will not accept a divided heart for unless the creature be loved in and for him it is like offering him what the creature has left nineteenth day st peter of alcantara said whoever would draw us from humility no matter under what pretense is a ravenous wolf in sheep's clothing ready to devour in a moment what has cost us so much time and trouble to obtain twentieth day st anthony of padua said however wise a man may be he should always seek counsel and direction from the ministers of god twenty-first day st bernardine of siena said charity loves submission and self-abasement she seeks the common good and the advantages of many not her own convenience twenty-second day st francis said be patient in tribulation watchful in prayer strenuous in labors modest in speech grave in manners and grateful for benefits because for all these things god has prepared for you an eternal kingdom twenty-third day st francis said the greater is the function of those who guard the precious body and blood of our lord who receive it themselves and communicate it to others the greater is also the sin of those who speak against them twenty-fourth day st francis said happy he who hoards up in heaven the treasures he gains he will not wish to let them appear before men for he knows that god will manifest his works to whom and when he pleases twenty-fifth day st fidelis of sigmarigen said god gave us life by suffering death so we cannot keep this life except by dying to ourselves and since our reward is to be eternal why fear constant suffering on earth twenty-sixth day blessed egedius said happy he who has charity for all and yet looks not for it from others who does great service to his neighbor and looks for no return twenty-seventh day venerable mary cherubina said there is no better means of growing in love of god than by suffering much for him in the same way the surest sign of a soul loving god is the desire of suffering for him twenty-eighth day st francis said i recommend to you great patience in all events so that when grieved even to excess by a brother or whoever it may be you should receive it as a favor and desire that and nothing else moreover love those who treat you thus twenty-ninth day st francis said be mild towards sinners quick to forgive mortified in your manner of living poor in dress gentle in words and faithful to god and to your duty thirtieth day st francis said love all men those dear to you and those who displease you for the former are plainly your friends and the latter are not your enemies thirty-first day st catherine of bologna said no one ever yet relied upon his own prudence without by a just judgment of god coming to great grief 
this enemy is doubly powerful and malicious when linked with self-love end of chapter seven